Our story begins with Keima Katsuragi, a boy who can win any girl's heart in dating simulators with his confident approach and flirting skills, and is known as the god of conquest. Due to his obsession with gaming, he plays dating sims in class instead of studying. Keima explains that he's only into girls from dating simulators. One day, he receives a strange message from someone that challenges him to prove if he's truly the god of conquest. He arrogantly accepts that challenge. However, this binds him in a contract with Elsia de Rooks Ima, or Elise, a demon from hell, who's here to capture evil spirits that have escaped from hell and hidden themselves in girls' hearts. The only way to force these spirits out is to make these girls fall in love with him. They both now have a collar around their neck. They'll die if Keima doesn't find a way to force out those evil spirits. He's tasked the first deal with Ayumi Takahara, his classmate who's competing in a track race. To win her heart, Kaima cheers her on by using banners every day. However, this only annoys Ayumi, and she either beats him up for it or straight up ignores them. Kaima is still positive she'll end up liking them one day. Ayumi is forced to run extra laps around the racetracks by her upper-class seniors. Just the day before the race, she ends up spraining her leg due to an accident. However, Kaima is able to deduce that she faked that injury and calls her out on it. Ayumi admits that she faked it due to her low confidence in herself. Kaima tells her to believe in herself, which sparks affection. She notices a pair of running shoes in the fruit basket Kaima gave her. She asks him whether he will cheer her up again in tomorrow's race. Kaima blushes and almost falls down the stairs. Ayumi grabs him as they kiss. This forces out the evil spirit from her heart, which Elsie captures. Ayumi ends up winning the track race, but loses all her memories regarding Kaima. Elsie transferred herself into Kaima's school as his sister. Kaima asks her why there's still a collar around their necks. Elsie tells him that there are still many runaway spirits around there. Kaima is reluctant to accept Elsie as his sister. Elsie ends up meeting Mari Katsuragi, Kaima's mother. Elsie introduces herself as Mari's husband's illegitimate daughter. This sends Mari in a shock, and she rages on her husband in a phone call. Despite that, she's more than happy to take care of Elsie along with her son. Kaima still refuses to accept Elsie as his sister. As a final attempt, she tells Kaima her story. She reveals that she has an older sister who excels in everything she does, while Elsie was stuck on a cleaning duty. This spirit capture task is her chance to finally do something remarkable as a demon. Kaima ends up accepting Elsie after hearing that. He tells her that he's only doing this for his benefit. Next day, Elsie detects another target, Mio Aoma, a rich girl in school who ends up buying all the yakisoba sandwiches to flaunt her wealth. After some practicing with Elsie, he comes up with a bulletproof confession for Mio. However, his plan fails when Mio orders her chauffeur to beat him up. Determined to force out the evil spirit, they follow her home. They're surprised to find out that she actually lives in a cheap apartment. Kaima and Elsie find out that Mia was only pretending to be rich. It turns out that her rich father is now dead, and her mother is working hard to meet ends meet. Her chauffeur scolds her for spending her month's money on all those sandwiches, and tells her to quit her facade. She arrogantly refuses, and the chauffeur leaves in frustration. Mia notices Kaima on her doorstep, and goes back inside the apartment after berating him. Kaima tells Elsie that since he's the only one who knows Mio's secret, he can use it to get closer to her. Kaima offers to be Mio's chauffeur as her original chauffeur is absent. He convinces her to sit in his bike so he can drop her off to school. She ends up accepting as she didn't have a second option. He drives her to school every day to win her heart. One day, Kaima is able to finally make Mio laugh when she attempts to whip him, but she soon returns to her cold expression. Kaima proceeds forward with his plan and brings her to a grand ball in a pumpkin buggy. In the backyard of the mansion, Kaima tells her that he doesn't know how to dance, and asks her to teach him. He ends up making her blush as they dance, however, they're stopped by her father's friends, who notice her and make fun of her financial situation. This sends Mio into a rage, but Kaima takes this chance to explain to her that she should stop pretending to be rich. Mio tells her that she did all that to live up to the expectations of her deceased father. Kaima convinces her to move on and accept the present. They then kiss, which forces out the evil spirit from her body. Elsie catches that evil spirit. Next day, Mio forgets everything about Kaima, but has a change of attitude regarding her lifestyle, though she still acts proud. Kaima's ego takes a huge hit as he's having difficulty conquering the heart of Sora Asuka, a character from the dating simulator Crayon. Elsie asks him about that. Kaima tells her that there's a bug in the game that's causing one scene to loop 
over and over again. Kame is still determined to win the game, so he tells Elsie to record all of his choices. He deduces that he might be able to avoid the bug by choosing a different pattern of choices in the game. She tries to back out due to the tiring process, but eventually agrees after he tells her that he's helped her on the quest so far too. Even after several attempts, they keep running into the same bug. She gets tired pretty quick and takes a break. She comes back to see that Kayuma is still playing that game, and has no intention of giving up. She advises that they should go to the company that made the game, but Kayuma tells her that the company went bankrupt. After many attempts, Kayuma is able to break the loop. However, he immediately runs into another bug. To Elsie's dismay, Kayuma continues to play the game. Then it's revealed in an article that one person is rumored to finally see the ending of the game, indicating that Kayuma finally beat the game. Elsie becomes a huge fan of teen idol Kanan Nakagawa. However, Kaima doesn't share that obsession since he only believes in game idols. Kaima explains that real-life idols are bound by time and will eventually grow old, but gaming idols are eternal and will live forever as a part of pop culture. They both have no idea that Kanan is actually their classmate. Next day, when they go to school, they see that the whole school is getting ready to receive Kanan, who's coming back to school. Kanan runs into Kaima on her return to school, but she's surprised to learn that he doesn't even know who she is. Elsie comes running in to meet her. During their meeting, Elsie detects an evil spirit inside her heart, thus making her Kaima's next target. Kaima is shocked to learn about this. Meanwhile, Kanan is still depressed about hearing that Kaima didn't recognize her. Kaima is reluctant to go after Kanan due to her behavior. He gets an invitation from Kanan, who tells him to meet her on the roof at an exclusive concert. He goes for the concert, but ends up losing interest and starts playing the game. She is shocked to see this and prepares to tase him. However, she gets a call and leaves. She invites him again for another concert. He tells Elsie that it'll be wise to ignore her as she's clearly setting a trap for him. The next day, Kima does the same thing to her. This makes her even more depressed and she disappears. It turns out that due to the spirit inside Cannon, she's turning invisible. She gets angry at Kima and tries to tase him again, but he saves himself by saying that her song was so peaceful that he fell asleep. She becomes visible again, but is still depressed. She tells him to show up again tomorrow for the concert. To understand Cannon's psyche, Kama sends Elsie to investigate Cannon. Elsie finds out that Cannon was part of a girl band, Citron. She tells Kayuma to be nice to her as she probably feels lonely. It turns out that Kanan was never noticed by people in the past, which led her to crave attention. Kayuma receives a text from Kanan after her shoot. He goes to meet her and cheer her up. This helps her become visible again. Cannon asks him if she can drop him more texts when she's down. Kaima approves. Cannon then spends the next few days texting Kaima every time she's down or worried about her performance. This tires out Kaima really quick. As their bond becomes stronger, he accepts an invitation to come to Cannon's biggest performance where she will be singing in front of 10,000 people. She's excited to perform in front of everyone as Kaima contemplates his strategy. However, she disappears from the stadium before her performance. As everyone looks for her, Kaima moves on to his next step in his strategy, capturing Cannon's heart. It turns out that when Cannon was preparing for her concert backstage, memories from her past came flooding in, and she had second thoughts regarding her concert. She was too scared to mess up her performance, which caused her to become invisible again. Cannon then sneaks out from backstage, which causes everyone to look for her. As Elsie is worrying about Cannon, Kaima says that this is where his final step will come into play. He then heads out on a quest to find her. However, since she's invisible, it's a difficult task. They look everywhere, but find no luck. Kaima finally finds Cannon standing near a building. He goes to her and encourages her to go back to her concert. Kaima understands that she cares about people not paying attention to her as an idol. Kaima explains that she needs to stop worrying about it, since her hard work on its own is proof that she is an idol. With his encouragement, she prepares to go back to her concert and gives Kaima a kiss. This forces out the evil spirit from her body, which Elsie captures. When Cannon goes back to her concert, she finds letters of encouragement from her former bandmates from Citron. This cheers her up even more. She gets on the stage and gives the best performance of her life as she's showered with cheers from the audience. As Elsie and Kaima leave, Kaima tells Elsie that his views on idols haven't changed. Besides that, he believes that Cannon is now a shining star. At Kaima's house, Elsie prepares lunch for Kaima, but the result is an alive, hellish creature. Kaima scolds Elsie for this and calls her useless. When she complains about this to her classmate, she tells her to bake a strawberry cake to impress Kaima. She begins preparing the cake in the school kitchen. One of her eggs cracks, releasing a man dragon. 
in the school. However, Elsie goes back to cooking after getting away from the Mandragon. She prepares a cake using the same hellish ingredients. The Mandragon comes back again and the heat from the microwave causes other eggs to crack as well. As the monsters come closer to her, the microwave explodes, causing the monsters to disappear along with the cake. Meanwhile, Kame is being scolded by his teacher on the track for always playing games in class. Their conversation is cut short by the explosion and the Mandragon chases after the teacher. That is one way to get out of PE. The Mandragon eventually makes its way back to Kame's home and drops Elsie's cake on the bushes. Mari hears the noise and thinks that it's a thief and prepares to attack it. Meanwhile, Kame finds Elsie's cake in the bushes and eats the cake out of guilt. While he's eating the cake, Mari mistakes him for the thief and whacks him on the head with a vase. Outside the house, the man dragon gets eaten by the lunch Elsie made earlier. Good callback. Kaima's teacher, who was supposed to meet Kaima's mother, witnesses this and runs away. Kaima is surprised to learn that Elsie lacks knowledge of the human world in many aspects, so he sends Elsie to the library to learn more about the human world and its history. In the library, Elsie becomes interested in learning about fire trucks and asks the librarian Shiori Shiomiya where she can find more books that talk about fire trucks. The librarian doesn't hear her as she's deep in her thoughts. Elsie gets closer to ask her the same question, which makes Shiori fumble. Shiori tells Elsie to come back after school. Elsie detects an evil spirit inside of her, making her Kama's next target. Kama tells Elise that she'll be an easy target since he has experience with library girls through his dating sims. Meanwhile, Shiori gathers every book for Elsie that mentions fire engines. Kama thinks that she used the library index to find all those books, and says it out loud. However, Shiori used her memory to find all those books, as she had read all the books in the library though she's too shy to tell this to him. Kaima realizes that she'll be hard to deal with, since unlike other girls, she's hard to read. They go back to the library the next day. As Shiori's removing some books to dispose of them, she almost falls back with a book. Kaima comes to the rescue and saves her. She tries to thank him, but due to her shy nature, ends up fumbling on her words. Shiro is having trouble properly saying thanks to Kaima, but she is able to say it and moves on with her library tasks. As she's walking away, Kaima remarks that books are now useless with the advent of technology, and once a book is scanned, it can be thrown away. This angers Shiori, and she musters up the courage to call Kaima stupid. After saying that, she leaves. Elsie calls him out on it, but Kaima said that he did that to make her speak and understand her psyche. It's revealed in a flashback that Shiori could never speak normally to people due to her shyness. That's why she developed a love for books, to compensate for that. The next day, Shiori is attending a meeting at the library. She wants to add to the conversation, but is too shy to say anything. As she walks, she notices Kaima writing in a book. She immediately grabs the book to prevent him from damaging it further. He justifies his action by saying that he was just making corrections, as the information in the book was wrong. He then says that books are useless due to lack of instant edits. She musters up the courage to call him an idiot and quickly leaves. The next day, she catches him writing in a book again. She goes to him to take the book away, but realizes that it's his own notebook. She tries to say sorry in her mind, but ends up berating him when she speaks. Kaima remarks that her inner and outer voices are flipped. This makes her walk away. The next day, they finally end up talking to each other, and she realizes that due to her anger, she's able to have a conversation with Kaima. Later, they see her ripping a page into pieces. Using her magic, Elsie fixes it to reveal that it's a notice to dispose of the library books for the media room. After reading this, Kaima prepares for his next move. To prevent the books in the library from being disposed of, Shiori barricades the library and locks herself in. As everyone knocks on the door and screams at Shiori to open the door, she falls asleep and dreams about her past and how she came to love books. She's woken up by a voice and somebody knocking on the door and some rubble. As she goes to investigate, she runs into Kaima, who snuck into the library through a hole made in the ceiling by Elsie. He tells Shiori that he supports her and stays with her in the library. The library committee cuts off the electricity, which causes them to stumble as some books fall over them. They're stuck under a rubble of books. Kaima comments how the real world is scary. Shiori agrees with Kaima and says that she wants to be here forever. Kaima says that's a lie and she always wanted to socialize but couldn't due to her shy nature. She wanted to take part in the real world but couldn't due to her fear of being judged by others. Kaima tells her to stop barricading herself from the real world. Shiori tells her that she doesn't know how she'll do that. Kaima tells her that he will give her the courage to do that and kisses her. This releases the spirit from her heart which Elsie captures. When the library committee walks in, Shiori tells them that she doesn't want them to dispose of the books. 
The secretary agrees to hold another meeting. She loses all her memories with Kaima, but decides to write a story on what she remembers. Kaima is angry with Elsie that ever since he met her, he doesn't have enough time to play games. And new games are piling up in his room. He runs into his room to finish the backlog of games by playing six at the same time. He's able to multitask his way and play the games like an expert, but this does cause him to burn out later on. However, he keeps playing. He goes so hard that he ends up burning out his consoles. Elsie ends up coming to check on him and tells him to stop. She tells him that he shouldn't be spending all his time playing video games. He tells her that he loves games so much that he can't help himself. He ups his strategy by playing even more games all at once. He's finally able to finish up all the games except one. However, he's now too tired to continue playing. As he's about to give up, he starts hallucinating and seeing heroines from his games cheering him on to continue the dating sim. He follows the girls into the world of gaming where they dance together. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.